It all started for me in the, in the mid-50s. My mother took me downtown to Bill Street to see B.B. King and Bobby Blue Bland in Handy Park. In those days, B.B. King and, and Bobby Blue Bland were playing on a flatbed truck. The flatbed trucks, they had two trucks pushed together, and that made the stage. It was predominantly a black audience. And I didn't have any idea what I was looking at, but for some strange reason, all of that just kind of like got in my bones subliminal, subliminally. And here I am, 50 years later, I'm still doing this stuff. We had an integrated band. We had five black guys and one white guy. Now, uh, if, you, if you live around here in Memphis, uh, you know, back in those days, the black people went to black schools and the white people went to white schools. But we had a situation whereas the white guy that played in the group, we all went to Booker T. Washington High School. Now, he went to Central High School, which was a you know, predominantly white school. He went to his parents and told his parents that he wanted to transfer from Central High School, which in those days, not only was it a predominantly white high school, it was an elite school. You know, they had a fit. But he was headstrong. Uh, some kind of way, he convinced them to let him do it. So he transferred from a predominantly white high school in, in the 60s to Booker T. Washington and was accepted. He became one of us. And that was, in those days, that was special. I became a, a professional musician, really, believe it or not, by hanging around uh, Stax Records. We auditioned for Stax Records uh, for Steve Cropper. And he says, you know what? Uh, y'all just okay, y'all just sound all right, you know what I mean? But he said, I'm gonna give y'all another audition. So the second time when we were leaving, the president of Stax Records, see, he see us leaving, he said, who are y'all? We said, we're the Barcades. He said, who is that? He said, it's us. He said, will y'all come back up to the studio one Sunday when you're not doing anything? And we said, sure. So this next time that we came back, we plugged up and we started playing for him. And he said, play a little something. We started playing this little riff that we had been playing at the club, at the Hippodrome all night. And uh, Jim Stewart, uh, he started twitching and stuff like that. He said, what is that? He said, we don't know. He said, I tell you what, whatever it is, keep it. Little did I know, he went up in the control room and uh, Ben, our trumpet player, played this little nursery rhyme rip and that became our first record. The record was called Soul Finger. That was our very first gold record, and uh, to date, it's still the biggest record that we've ever had. We had a tragedy uh, uh, in December. We were, you know, we were playing with Otis Redding, and uh, we were on our way from Cleveland, Ohio, to Madison, Wisconsin. The plane, on its final approach into Madison, Wisconsin, uh, it crashed into a lake called Lake Monona in, in uh, Wisconsin. And it took the lives of all of the Barcades, including Otis Redding. When we traveled, we had two more people than his plane would hold. So in every instance, uh, two people would always have to take a commercial flight. This particular day, I happened to be one of the two people to take the commercial flight. Otherwise, I would have been on the plane as well. The accident happened in 1967. and. By, you know, by the middle of 1968, we were able to debut our new band. So we were in the process of rebuilding the Bar Case. So on April the 4th, 1968, we just happened to be in the studio recording. And, uh, you know, we weren't we wasn't paying any attention to, you know, all the commotion that was going on. We know Dr. Martin Luther King was in Memphis, but, you know, we just know he was in for, uh, for a rally or something like that. But then, around 7 or 8 o'clock, uh, you know, they told us that, they, you know, they had, had curfews and that, you know, we couldn't leave the studio and go home. We had, so we had to end up spending the night in the recording studio because all out on Macklemore, they had National Guard, you know, armed guards standing at each corner. They even had tanks out there. One of the National Guardsmen told us that, um, that Martin Luther King had been uh, assassinated. 
we just didn't know what to think at first. There was a lot of riots and a lot of unrest in the city, and, and it just really took a while for everything to, to try to, you know, get back to normal. It's one of those experiences that you would just have to be there to really feel that experience. It's like nothing I'd ever experienced before.